Hi, this is Lisa Dinkelman from Seattle Quilt Company. Um, I want to talk in this video a little bit about selecting your motifs for fabric collage. Uh, if you're doing one of my classes that's a one day class, then although it's not essential that you do pre-cutting for the, for the class, if you do actually manage to pre-cut some of your motifs, then you will get further on the day of the class. So, um, so that's why I am doing this video today. So the first thing I wanna do is just talk to you a little bit about fabric selection. I do sort of tend to go for prints. Um, something like this, for instance, this is a K facet fabric. This is a really easy one for fabric collage because you have really defined uh, motifs, which are flowers in this case. Um, so these are really nice flat, uh, floral fabrics to start with. Uh, something else that's, you know, maybe a little bit more difficult, but still quite straightforward is a, a print like this where, you know, you've still got some really defined um, flowers and leaves and that sort of thing. Uh, here's another one that I really like. This one I like a lot because you've got options. You could cut this whole cluster out and really fill an area really fast. Or if you find that you just need the pinks or you just need a bit of green, then you can sort of pick and choose what you, what you want. I like this one as well because and you'll see there's a lot of holes in it because I've used a lot of it. But you know, it's a little bit more bang for your buck because you get different blues and you get some greens and you get some yellows. It's getting a little bit more difficult because you've got to decide with a print like this whether you want to take all of that flower or do you want to take all of this as a cluster. But um, but don't be concerned about, you know, sort of because a flower like that is only a partial flower, you can still use it, and we'll come back to talking about that later. And then here's another one. Again, the print's getting a little bit more busy, but there's still lots to work with there. You've got yellows, you've got reds, you've got um, greens. And again, you've got lots of choices when it comes to, um, to pulling out uh, different, um, different elements and different colors. Here's yet another one. This is one, again, a little bit more busy, but you can pull out sort of pinks and you can pull out different yellows and that sort of thing. And I've got one more here. Again, just getting a little bit more sort of busier, but you can still sort of cut out, you know, you could cut out this big flower here, you could cut that out. And um, there's a lot to work with there and there's a lot of different colors in that. So I've sort of shown you all of those sort of from what I think is the kind of the easiest prints to work with to the more difficult. I usually tell people start off with what looks like really easy prints to work with and then the more cutting out you do, the more you kind of get a feel for what you can and can't cut out. Now I tend to cut out a lot of flowers, but, but don't be afraid to cut out other motifs, whether it's birds or uh, something like this is kind of abstract, but there's a lot of potential in here. Uh, there's, there's actually sort of like little birds in here, uh, but sort of like, I mean, I've used this bird as a, as a beak uh, for, a, for a rooster before. Uh, this kind of flower here, which hopefully you can see, um, is quite feathery looking. So, you know, you just kind of start looking uh, at your your fabric prints a little bit more differently and sort of what you could use for what when you're sort of looking for feathers but you can't find lots of feathers. There's lots of sort of leafy prints that work really well instead of feathers. Um, here's another one again just to give you sort of more ideas for different motifs and then of course this one as well. You know you can cut out these for just you know bold splashes of color here and there where you want sort of that little spiral shape. So um, a lot of times when I'm talking about fabric collage, I say flower. So when I say flower and I forget to say motifs, just think, you know, you can really cut out anything that you want. Uh, as you'll see, I tend to use prints but uh, rather than batik, batik fabrics, but um, I have seen people use batiks and sometimes in batiks you get some really nice sort of motifs that you can cut out and there's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. So once we've uh, 
sort of chosen a flower, for instance. So let me just grab an, kind of an easy one here. Um, what we want to do is we just want to roughly cut out uh, a bunch of our motifs. So I want this little yellow flower here. So I'm just going to roughly cut it out of the fabric for now. Okay, so I've just cut that out. And once I've cut out several, I've just got a whole bunch here that I've, I've done. So here I've sort of cut out a cluster. Uh, here I've cut out another sort of cluster because they're similar colors. Um, these, I've kind of cut them out together, but I'll probably, once I put the steam -a seam on, I'll probably cut each one out individually. Uh, again, something else here, I figure I'll probably cut that all out and I'll probably cut that out separate. Here we've got some uh, tulips, a nice just kind of like a big leaf. And again, just, just to kind of give you a selection of, of things to work with. Don't be afraid of greenery. Greenery is really useful, I find, in, in fabric collage. So that's a selection of um, things that I've cut out and I'm now ready to back those all with steam -a seam 2. So I've got a piece of steam -a seam 2 here. Uh, you can use the regular or the light. I tend to use the regular, but I've had a lot of people in my classes use the light and it works just fine. So I've got a piece here. I'm going to cut it down just a little bit smaller for the purposes of what we're doing. So this piece is probably about sort of 8 by 10 inches. And what I want to do is I've got the gridded side, I've got the non-gridded side. I'm going to take away the paper backing off the non-gridded side. And I'm just going to put this on the table, sticky side up. And then I'm going to start putting some of my motifs down that I want to cut out. And I kind of try and, you know, sort of fit them on like, um, like puzzle pieces just to try and get as much out of this fabric as possible. Let's see, I've got some smaller ones here. I can maybe put a little one in there. Pop that in there, or maybe I'll stick it down here. Let's see, I've got that guy. And anyway, so that kind of just sort of gives you an idea, but you just go ahead and fill that whole thing up with, um, you know, as many sort of uh, motifs and such as you can, just to sort of get as much as you can out of that piece of steam -a seam And then you're ready to go ahead and cut these out. So now every once in a while you do get a fabric that I presume it's the sizing on it that just makes it not want to um, stick very well. If it's not sticking just on its own, you can always put a pressing sheet over it and, and use a little bit of heat from the iron to make it stick. But I usually find nine times out of 10, it, it does stick just fine. And I'm just gonna kind of now just roughly cut these all out just to make it a little bit easier for me when I sit and and cut them all with the sharper scissors so I'm just using my not so sharp scissors and really I just wanted to go back to this one because it's nice and little and I can sort of show you so now at this stage okay so it's got the the steam -a seam on the back we're now ready to cut this flower out don't be afraid to get a little bit of backing in there. Not backing, background fabric, sorry. And we're just gonna cut that out. I'm not terribly precious about sort of making sure I get all the edges exactly perfect. So that's now cut out. And so it's got that backing on it. It's got the steam -a seam on the back and it's still got the, that gridded side of the um, backing, the paper backing of the steam -a seam on the back. And these are now ready to just sort of put to one side. I usually just stick them in a bag, ready to go. So here's just to kind of show you a few that I've already done. Um, now, here's a few sort of singles 
Again, these have all, like I say, they've got the steam seam on the back. They're all just sort of individual flowers. I like to go for lots of sizes and lots of colors. There we go. A nice big one there. And so they've all got the paper backing on them. You can also, remember we talked about clusters earlier, you can cut out clusters of flowers. Great thing about cutting this out is, like I say, I've got the option of just using this, you know, on a dress or something. It would just be a beautiful splash of color or um, around a border or something. But also, you know, it's, it's all got the backing on it. If I decided sort of, I was working on a collage and I really just needed that greenery, then I could go ahead and just cut this away from the rest of it and you know still keep the rest of it intact um, there's another sort of what I would consider a cluster because I've left the leaves there but again I've got options if I just need the green I can cut those off or if I just need the purple I'll cut all the green leaves off that's just a cluster of greenery I love to cut out greenery I think it's always useful um, it's another what I would call a cluster um, and then again another cluster there of the two tulips and then also uh, lots of leaf shapes I like to have lots of leaf shapes when I'm doing my um, my collage I remember they've all still got the backing paper on them okay so something to remember uh, when it comes to our workshop um, I'd say for the one day workshop, you want to probably have uh, a good sort of 150 to 200 of these cut uh, and ready to go. And don't panic, it sounds like a lot, but you know, if you just kind of just sit in front of the television, it's amazing. If you're just watching something kind of mindless, it's, it's amazing how quickly you get through the cutting of these. Um, and remember, you know, any motifs, it doesn't have to be just flowers. Also, don't be afraid to cut out multiples uh, of the same motif. Sometimes it's nice to sort of use three or four or five even of the same flower in an area just to give you a real block of color. Um, also in a one day workshop, it's amazing, you know, there'll be somebody that really wants that blue flower that you have and you'll be eyeing that butterfly that they cut out and you'll be able to be doing a little bit of swapping during the class. So, um, so that's another good reason to cut out multiples. Um, your flowers don't all have to be complete either and by that what I mean is uh, okay this isn't a flower but this is a um, beautiful koi that was on the edge of my fabric and it's too beautiful not to cut out so I mean I had most of it but the thing is it doesn't matter if you've got a beautiful flower or some other motif that's on the edge of your fabric um, either where it's been cut or along the selvage, you can still use it because you will be able to overlay when you're doing your fabric collage, overlay something over the top of that cut edge and nobody's going to know. So, so don't be afraid to cut out some of these beautiful motifs that are, you know, only half there. And then the last thing I wanted to mention is, um, again, I was talking about background earlier. Don't be afraid to get background, like something like this, for instance. I do really don't feel like it's worth my time to cut out these little holes where the background fabric is. Nobody's gonna notice that. When that's overlaid over a bunch of other flowers, nobody's gonna notice that you, know, you have some of the background there. So life's too short. Don't make it difficult on yourself. This is another example where you could work really, really hard cutting in and out and in and out on every single one of these petals. And then what you're gonna end up with is something that took you 20 minutes to cut out. And once you've got all these gaps in between the petals, it's not gonna cover anything. So I would just cut around, leave the black on the inside and just cut around the flower. You, you'll thank me. It's just, um, it's just not worth trying to cut out, you know, in and out, in and out of every little bit. Um, so anyway, that is uh, a quick sort of um, discussion on sort of cutting out your flower motifs and other motifs. 
Uh, we've got a class coming up, so I hope that that has helped you. And, um, and hey, anybody else that's doing fabric collage, I hope this has helped you. And if you have any questions at all, uh, please feel free to email me. Uh, my email address is lisa at seattlequiltcompany.com.